and what you are doing great. Um, in this tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to create a command follow and then you can use in your project in many test scripts. So what is the problem? The problem is you can see in our previous test script, we call login, input email, input password, and then we click on login button. For example, we have another business function and we just keep doing the same like this, the same follow like that, right? And that means that we waste our time because uh, even in this place or in another place, the login function will be input email, input password, and click on login button, right? So if that happened in your project, but I do believe that will happen because from my experience, I got a lot of common flow in the real project. So today I'm going to propose for you uh, a new thing that's how can we customize our page object and create common test follow. Then we can reuse here in the test script. So let me try to open the tech editor. Okay, we don't need the tech editor. Simple like this. For example, we have a page object, right? Right now, we are using the page object in the test script. And I already explained for you what is the problem. So I'm going to propose for you the next thing that's a page object. You have page object. And then you create something like test follow, command. Actually, it should be command test follow. And you are going to use it in your test script, multiple test script anywhere. So we are going to introduce another layer in our test that is command test flow to reduce the time we are going to reduce the same flow like that, right? So that's in the main part. So let's try to customize our page object and create a command test flow. Now the page object we need to uh, we need to um, change a little. So previous, we introduced posting the gesture to return the file element from the screen. And the main method that to interact with the element on the screen. Now, if you want to create some common test flow, I suggest you to create just page object and return for the gesture, the file element from the screen only in this case. So you may ask yourself that why this guy just tell very different ways every single time. Now I'm not trying to make the, the thing messy, but the things here that I want to explain for you many aspects from a problem. And then you can understand uh, easier, you can understand deeper. And in your real project, you can have a decision yourself, not from my side. Okay, hopefully you understand the point here. So let's create a new page object, right? In this case, I'm going to remove this one. I don't need it, right? And because I'm, I'm inheriting the credential form, so I'm going to do the same thing in credential form here. I don't know why I have this slide in the file. So let's see, we have something like uh, input email. Okay, let's delete all of the thing here. And I just introduce very simple. I introduce the gesture to return the file element from the screen. That's it. Now in your soup directory here, you create a new folder with the name. You can choose any name, but I should say the name that is test flow. Right. So you have pay object, you have test flow and you have test script and you can understand what is page object, what is test script. Now we are going to create test flow. So under test flow, you create a same uh, directory level structure like in the page object and the test script. 
That means you're going to create an account for the here and you will have a flow with the name login. Why it has a name login? Because you are going to create a command flow for the login, right? So that will be a class basically with the name login, right? You can specify something like login flow, but you don't need to do that. Just simple something like the login, that should be okay. But to the thing to is, uh, maybe for you is your when you import, you can put something like login flow, okay? Uh, can sure that mean, okay, let me see the option again. It seems I'm going to refactor the whole support with the name login. You see, it's not correct. So search for text, search for common, no, search for reference, no, just login flow. That should be okay. Do you want to? And now everything is okay. Sorry for the noise it around. It's playing around because I'm at home. Uh, so in this case, you have a, a flow with the name login flow, and you have going to to create a command uh, command flow with the name. Actually, it's your method. That's a uh, login with uh, credential. And here you will put something like uh, the email and the password, right? Because you want to log in, so you have to provide email and password. And now you're going to, to reuse the page object. Let's import logins from the page object here. And we can use it in our command flow here, right? So let's say we have login dot uh, email test field dot set value email, right? And then uh, what's that? Okay, just a uh, uh, just a warning from the test script, um, the, the the not test script, type script. It's not something like error. So we call email test field. This is a gesture and it will return a file element on the page. So we are going to use the set value here and we set the email value from the parameter. So we do the same thing, login dot um, password test field dot set value and password value. And finally, we do that login dot uh, button login and we call click that's it right so we have the login with credential and in the command flow you need to introduce some verification command verification so in the login flow you can put something like verify <coughs> the email okay this is camo case camo case and I often you came okay uh, in Java, but in not yet I use snake case. So just try to make it consistent with all the places. So login with credential, train to login with credential. And here verified email test field. It, seem, it doesn't make sense that you have a common verification with the name verify, uh, verify email test field here in the login, but just for example, you know. So the first thing you have command flow and the second thing you have a common verification under your flow here. And you do the same thing that you expect from fed private IO that login dot email test field to have test that's the, the value here is uh, the name to have that value. You see, we are we are going to do same thing here, the name and the name here. 
specifically the, the email. But we will try to solve that problem in another lesson uh, when I show you how to create the text data. And in that tutorial, I'm going to show you how to modify the text flow in an appropriate uh, way. Okay. So now we are going to use this login flow in our text script. Let's open the text script account here and try to create another test script with the name test case 006 and log in with command flow, right? And it's a test script, so let me import. Okay, let me try to input or decry here first. So it should be login function. And we insert a test script here, so uh, log uh, should, should track email, uh, email uh, text field, something like that. <clears throat> So we are going to reduce the login, uh, login flow, right? Um, let's see. We have we need to import the login flow. Login flow. So you you don't see anything like login flow, like before the IDE succession. So in the case your IDE didn't success before, but you need to notify that. You created a class login flow here, but you didn't export it, so you cannot see it uh, outside how to, because you didn't export, so you cannot import, right? Easy to understand, right? So in this case, you need to export, uh, export uh, default and login flow here, right? Login flow. <clears throat> That's mean we just export the class, not an instant like uh, a page object. And now here you probably see it login flow from test flow account login flow. So we will call something like um, we specify something like let email equal uh, toe let password equal dot 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 like this and we call login flow and we declare a new instance like login uh, with the name that should be login flow or oh, there's no succession let's put manually login flow uh, equal new login flow up oh, sorry I <laughs> I mess up the syntax in Java. In Java, we need to have something like that, but in Node.js, just declare something like less login flow equal new login flow, right? And I call login flow dot login with credential, the email, and the password. Now I get the value from email here and the password here. And after that, I will call login flow that's verify email test field so in other test scripts i will when uh, whenever i i, I want to log in in my application i just call login flow and login with credential instead of replacing uh those steps so that's it, the idea so we can reduce our time on creating our test script now the test script still read ability here you see this here uh, it comes from login flow and we call the login with credential here okay let's try to run it uh, probably if you fail you know why because we forgot to navigate to the login form i promised you to create some navigation tar to avoid using this slide, but you can do it yourself. It is not a page thing, right? So here we click and try to replace this value in the text configuration file, copy the page and copy from content root. You open the text configuration file and now you replace 
the new one here. Okay. So make sure you have your FPM server running here and your device is connected to your laptop and you trigger the command to run that the NDM test and you specify the test configuration file indicates the test config dot try and enter. So technically it should work. In, input email, password, click on login and verify. Uh, something wrong here. Mm -mm. Let's see what happened. Expect email to have test undefined. Oh, okay, you see, we expect uh, this element to have the test is uh, undefined. Why is it undefined? Just go back to our test script because I forgot to put the email value here. So you see, we put email, we put email in the same instant. It doesn't make sense. But I told you that I will share you how to create the test data. And in this case, we just do something like that. And we will try to customize our test flow in a correct way in a real way in a real running project okay okay run it again <clears throat> this time i think it's work Yeah, you see, everything is okay now. So, you know, we can create a command test flow and let's summarize a little. So, you create a directory with the same level, something like that. That means you have a page object for the function at cloud and you have test flow for the function at scout. Why do you need to do that? Because when you read your source code, you will, you know, you can navigate and you can find page object and you can find the test script or even the test flow easier so you can uh, construct your uh, your test code your test source code something like that will be easier for you and your team so keep practicing and keep learning see you in the next lesson